an alternative data file format to XML, which has become very popular in recent years, is JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and despite the name being JavaScript Object Notation, um, a lot of languages have picked up the support for JSON natively. So PHP, C++, all these other languages have adopted JSON as a data format that they will read and can transmit. So how does JSON differ from XML? Well, for one, it's a lot more compressed. If I was to create an XML file, it would have the .xml file extension. Here I've got a file called info.json. This is my JSON file. And it really is just a combination of JavaScript objects and JavaScript arrays. And you can nest them any way you want. So if I was going to create a file, I'd start off, for example, with curly braces. Curly braces means object. Let's do the same thing that we did with the XML. So I'm going to create an object called Fargo. So this is my first property inside my object, and Fargo is going to be an object. Inside of that, there's going to be an object called movie. That is going to be an object. And then there's also one called TV series. There we go. Now, we can space this out to make it a little bit easier to read. So Fargo is an object inside of which there are two objects. Here's the end of my Fargo object. Inside of movie, um, I believe that we had something called directors that had a property, but we can just turn that into a string and say it was the Cohen brothers. And then we will have an object called cast. And this one we're going to turn into an array. Uh, oh, there was also a year property. So we can go in here. There's an attribute in the XML. Here, we're just going to make it a property. There. So there's no elements. There's no attributes, there's no text, it all comes down to properties inside of either objects or arrays. Inside the cast we had William H. Macy and Francis McDormand. There we are. In the TV series there was a year property 2014, and we had cast, which will also be an array, and I believe we had Colin Hanks and Martin Freeman were the two names that we put inside there. So there we go. This is the JSON equivalent of the XML file that we built. Now the rules for this are you've got to have things properly structured as you would any object or array in JavaScript. Square brackets are the arrays. Curly braces are the objects. We must have double quotes around all the strings. All the properties will have double quotes in them. And then we're using colons. And then the value can be an object, an array, a string, a number, a boolean, or null. And that's it. Now the official website for this is json.org. Um, down at the bottom of the page they have a list of all the languages that support JSON now. These diagrams may look a little bit confusing at first, but basically this is what you're allowed to have in JSON. You can have objects. Objects start with a curly brace, end with a curly brace. Inside of them there's a string. You can't use uh, this string is going to be the label, so Fargo, movie, year, and then there's a colon, and then there's a value. And here and here there can be commas if you've got multiple string value pairs 
inside of your object. With an array, you have the square brackets. Inside the square brackets, there's going to be values. The values could be strings, they could be numbers, they could be booleans. So down here it says the value we're talking about up here. Arrays can have commas that come before or after if there's multiple values. The values can be strings, numbers, objects, arrays, booleans, or null. Those are three keywords. The strings themselves are allowed to be any Unicode character except for double quotes, a backslash, or a control character. If you're using the quotations or the backslash or some other special character, what you have to do is start with the backslash. This is known as an escape sequence. You start with the backslash and then you put the quotation mark. That makes this legal. Whenever it sees the backslash, it knows the next character that comes after it is a special character of some sort. So if you want to have the reverse solidus or the backslash, you'd have two of them in a row. The forward slash, you'd have the backslash, then the forward slash. B means backspace, F means form feed, N means new line, R, carriage return, T means a tab, and then if it's any other Unicode character, you would say slash U and then four digits. So in our XML file, or sorry, in our JSON file, if I wanted to add something, let's say I wanted to add the Russian word da as part of my string, I'm going to say slash U, meaning it's going to be Unicode, 0414, and then slash u0434. So those are the four digit Unicode character sequences that represent the capital Russian D and the lowercase Russian A. If you want to look up the Unicode characters, if you want to find out where these are, unicode.org slash charts. This is all of the Unicode characters, all of them. And for Cyrillic, if we jump into that, we can see here, there's the capital Russian D, and it's 0414. So this column is 041, 0410, 0410010, 0412, 0413, 0414. So there's the capital D, here's the capital A, and that would be dot, and that would be inside of our JSON file.